Hey guys, welcome to a new video and yes, you read that right, the first episode in my new and improved hair history series. If you are new here, there was a series on my channel about six years ago called Hair History where I went over different parts of European hairstyling uh, in each episode, talking about hairstyling practices during that specific time and sharing a tutorial for a particular hairstyle also from that specific time period. It was a really popular series on my channel but I've always felt like I didn't quite do it justice. Uh, both my research and execution were a little bit rushed as I was still working on my bachelor's degree at the time and for some reason I really felt like I had to publish an episode every single week which just wasn't nearly enough time to put the work in that it deserved and needed. Basically I think this series deserves a do-over. In the new and improved hair history series I'm going to take you through the fascinating history of women's hairstyling in European history from the classical age until the 20th century. We are going to dive a little bit deeper than last time and of course there will be hairstyling demonstrations as well so I will pick out one hairstyle in each particular episode to show you how to recreate. Speaking of the classical age that is actually where our journey begins today but before we get started with that a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is kindly sponsored by my favorite hair care brand Function of Beauty. Now I'm sure you've heard me talk about Function of Beauty before because I've been using their stuff for years now and I absolutely love it. My entire hair care routine is Function of Beauty. But if you're unfamiliar with the brand, they make customizable hair care that is formulated to your specific hair goals and hair needs. All of their products are dermatologically tested, they are vegan, cruelty-free, paraben-free, and sulfate free and I absolutely adore them. They have done my hair so good. <laughs> Ever since I started using Function of Beauty my hair has been smooth, soft, shiny, just looking really healthy and great and feeling fantastic as well. I honestly haven't used any other shampoo or conditioner since I started using these. How this works is they have this quiz on their website where you fill in kind of your current hair type and then where you want to take your hair. So my hair profile is fine, straight and oily hair and my goals are to hydrate, lengthen, replenish hair, soothe scalp and strengthen. And these goals make sure that my hair care is rich and nourishing without being too heavy for my fine hair. You then get to customize your bottles by choosing a fragrance and a color and they print your name on the bottle as well. Mine says function of Lucy right there. <laughs> these are actually my newest bottles. I'm still working through the previous set I have. These actually last me a very long time. These guys are actually perfect if you want to try this out because with these you can get Function of Beauty's signature duo shampoo and conditioner for under $30 plus free shipping. I went for the pink color and the lavender scent by the way with these. It's my absolute favorite scent, very herbal. I highly recommend these products. I am using the entire line, the shampoo conditioner, the mask, the leave-in conditioner and the serum and I absolutely love all of them. So if you want to try this out I will have a link in the description box that will take you straight to where you can get your first set for under $30 plus free shipping, so definitely be sure to check that out. I want to give a massive thank you to Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video. And now let's go back to the ancient times. All right, so one of the earliest examples that we have of women's hairstyling in ancient Greece comes to us in the form of Kore. Kore are statues from the archaic period uh, depicting young women. And it's actually remarkable how similar all of these Kore hairstyles are. They consist of a center parting with curls that almost look like finger waves along both sides of the face which then cascade into several strands of either tied ringlets or braids. I have seen both mentioned in scientific sources but when I look at the statues myself like photos of the statues I feel like in many of them they are clearly meant to be curls and sometimes it is unclear whether they should be curls or braids. Um, it's hard to tell what the artist was trying to capture but my guess would be that in the majority of time they were supposed to be tight ringlets. The remainder of the hair is then held back by a hairband or a headpiece and falls down the back in a mass of curls. Around the 5th century BC we begin to see the pulled back 
waves that we typically associate with ancient Greece and ancient Greek hairstyling, culminating in the Hellenistic period, of course, which has given us some absolutely stunning sculptural art with very detailed depictions of hairstyles. In earlier centuries, the hair is bound with ribbons or strips of fabric, sometimes wound around the head several times in that typical style we recognize nowadays. And later in the Hellenistic period, we see the hair pulled back into buns, knots, and sometimes even bows, and adorned with pins, circlets, or wreaths made of metal or various different materials. Braids also gained popularity towards the end. I personally think the hairstyles from this period are remarkably similar to those of the first half of the 20th century, but we'll get to that much later in this series. As you will see, <laughs> history repeats itself constantly when it comes to trends and hairstyling, but Again, we'll get to that later in this series. So as for the ancient Romans, they follow a similar pattern of hairstyles getting increasingly more intricate and complicated as time progresses. So during the late Republic, uh, women wore their hair in this funny sort of 1940s, 2010 mashup <laughs> with a poof on the forehead coming down into a low bun at the nape of the neck. Ancient Roman women loved their braids and braids were an integral part of many hairstyles. But what they also loved were wigs. <laughs> wigs were very fashionable, preferably made of nice exotic hair colors from around the borders of the empire. So German blonde was a very popular color as was imported Indian black. But of course, I cannot talk about ancient Roman hairstyles without mentioning one of the most remarkable styles to come out of ancient Rome, um, which is the Flavian Orbis. And this is a hairstyle where the front of the hair is arranged in a halo of curls above the face. It is pinned over a wire frame, presumably, and the back of the hair is then worn in a sort of bun made of many different braids. I adore this style. It is so extravagant. It is so fabulous. <laughs> And it was popular for quite a while, but wearing just the braided bun without the orbis was also an option. And that is actually where the hairstyle kind of morphed into. So we see um, the front of the hair coming down and down and down, and the braids actually coming up and up and up to swallow the entire head. So the braids were arranged around the back of the head, leaving the crown exposed. By the way, if you are interested in uh, ancient Roman hairstyling, I highly recommend checking out Janet Stevens's YouTube account and just um, her public publications in general. She is a hairstylist who dove really deep into ancient Roman hairstyling and does this kind of almost experimental archaeology where she recreates ancient Roman hairstyles beautifully, very faithfully. Highly recommend checking that out. By the way, both the ancient Romans and the ancient Greeks did use curling irons to create their beautiful ringlets. So now that we have a little bit of historical context, allow me to show you how to create this specific hairstyle after the fashion of ancient Rome. I am going to need more hair for this, so I am starting by applying a set of hair extensions to make my hair both longer and fuller, so that I can do all the braids that I need to do. I'm going to start with a center parting, and I am first going to create two rolls of hair along my face, that are winding down along the side of my face. So since I have bangs and I need them to stay, I am sliding in some bobby pins as I go along, making sure that this is nice and secure and doesn't slip out anywhere. And coming in with a little bit of hairspray to make sure that everything stays where it's supposed to. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. Again, make sure my bangs are nice and contained. <laughs> And then I'm going to pull up my hair into a ponytail. I am not going to be using historically accurate hair styling methods for these videos. My goal here is to show you how to recreate these hairstyles with things you probably already have at home. But if you want it to be more historically accurate, you could tie your hair using a piece of string. I am then going to divide my ponytail into six strands and braid each of these strands so that I am left with six braids in total. 
And these braids are going to form my tower braid. So I'm going to start by wrapping these. And they are actually a little bit short still. Preferably they would have been long enough to wrap around once completely into a full circle. But if your braids are too short then you can just do what I did and alternate the directions so that you do end up with a full circle in the end. So what I do is I make sure I pin my braids so that they are standing up and then as soon as possible I'm going to start stacking them on top of each other and when I start doing that I'm gonna have to make sure that they are pinned to each other. So I stick in a u-shaped hairpin in between so that one of the prongs catches one of the braids and the other prong catches the other braid and I'm kind of sewing them together in that way. Again, if you wanted to be more historically accurate, you could actually sew these together using, again, a piece of string and a blunt needle. Um, but bobby pins work just fine. And as soon as your braid is tall enough, you can actually just stick them in vertically, uh, which it makes it a little bit easier to hold securely. But I'm gonna continue in this way, stacking my braids on top of each other, standing up to create a tower braid that's as high as possible. For my ends, I am just tucking those away behind the braid. Alright guys, that brings us to the end of the first episode of Hair History 2.0. I really hope you enjoyed it. I am personally really looking forward to continuing with this series and making my way through history in the upcoming months. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for all the other episodes of Hair History 2.0, <laughs> as well as other beauty, fashion, sewing and lifestyle videos. I want to give another massive thank you to Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out the link in the description box below. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you so much for watching once again and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!